What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 140 and yes today it is the final of the European Championships with Spain against Germany here in the Euro 2020 final and of course it's also the last episode of the series as well. So I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to everyone who's been watching this series. I really do appreciate your support. As I've said many times before this is a secondary series not a primary one yet it still had an absolutely awesome amount of support and I just I, I can't say thank you enough for that I really do appreciate it it's been great to see how supportive you guys have been on this series despite it not being uploaded as regularly as my primary series so I really do appreciate your support it means an awful lot and hopefully <laughs> Hopefully in the final episode of the series and our first ever uh, major national tournament with Spain, we can get ourselves to win and bring home the trophy. So as you can see, this is going to be the final against Germany. Today's episode is going to be a live commentary. It will be a live Q&A and I get my questions from Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at DocLanders. Highly recommend it. Uh, my link to my Twitter is in the description of every single video. So I recommend you guys follow me on Twitter. It's just the best way to keep up to date on my videos. As you guys know, sub boxes especially over the past week just that they're, they're very inconsistent sometimes you won't get to see a new video from me in your sub box whereas if you follow me on twitter a link gets posted like seconds after it's been uploaded you'll never miss a video if you follow me on twitter and it is highly recommended so yeah you can uh, follow me on twitter at doclanders get involved in the series sometimes make some signings via straw polls and uh, of course for live commentaries get involved ask the questions and i got some good questions today thank you very much to everyone who's been asking the questions uh, as per usual i can't can't answer every question I get so if you ask me one I didn't answer it I do apologize but please don't take it to heart I just get so many questions asked I could I could never answer them all and I just pick a load of them favorite a few and uh, answer as many as physically possible so uh, even so we've got Germany here in the Euro 2020 final and like you guys have no idea how desperate I am to win this because to end a series of a loss would be terrible but also to know this is the only sort of national tournament final we'll ever get to because, as you guys know, this is the final episode of the series. Uh, of course, this has been our last season. Uh, the last season was our final full one. And we won't get to uh, play the World Cup in two years' time. Um, it's A few people ask me, you know, how comes like this series was designed to be played with a club in a country yet you never played a World Cup? And it's, it's my fault. You know, it's completely my fault. I genuinely believed that the Spain job was going to be offered to me like uh, a long time before it actually was. Don't forget, this is episode number 140 and we only took over Spain in episode 101. So, you know, we, we spent a large percentage of the series not managing Spain, which was half the point of the series. And that's my fault. I do apologize for that. It's just because I genuinely believed that the Spain job was going to come in earlier and I didn't want to buy it from the catalogue. But in hindsight, I really do wish I did buy the offer from the catalogue and made sure we could manage Spain earlier to really kick on the series earlier. So I want to say, you know, an apology straight away that we won't play the World Cup with Spain. Um, it's my fault, not yours or anyone else's. It's completely my fault. And uh, and there you go. Even so, hopefully with the Euros, we can win it, uh, get ourselves our first and obviously only European Championship and uh, international tournament with Spain and uh, bring home the trophy. I, I, I do believe losing it would be a bit of a disaster, in all honesty. So I'm desperate to win this. I'm really nervous. And Germany's squad is going to be really good. Although I have noticed that there is no team lineup again, which is unbelievably frustrating because how on earth can EA be so inconsistent with something as simple as just displaying the team lineups before the game, which means I have to go and grab it from the player ratings but I can see some of the Germany faces right now I know they're gonna have a great team Neuer's in gold I've seen Kadira and Goethe as well I think there's Muller and Royce there too so there's Neuer I'm pretty sure gonna have a great team but even so hopefully we can get the trophy hopefully we can get the win on our final episode of the series so because there's been no uh, team lineups thank you very much EA let's go and grab it from the player ratings because this looks just as good doesn't it and uh, you can see Germany's team that's our team obviously I'm gonna start Costa and Rigo together I think Costa deserves a start his Germany side, Neuer in goal, back for a Schmelzer, Hoover as the skipper, Nicholas Sewell and Hornshoe, uh, Kroos and Gadira as defensive midfielders, um, so, yeah, Gutzer, so I can read that on the screen there, Gutzer, Royce, uh, Muller and Volland as the striker, so Muller and Royce are going to be two dangerous options out wide, I'll have to watch for that. Kroos and Kadir, that, that's a solid team. That's a really good team. The only way I think we can abuse this sort of team is that at the back, I think we could possibly look at cutting in from the left and the right with uh, Rodriguez and Isco. But 
that's a solid team. That's going to be a really hard team to break down and beat, especially with Kadira, Kroos and Goetze as that midfield trio. Even so, we're underway. Hopefully, we'll get ourselves to win, but I think this could be Germany's win because we, we struggled against the Netherlands. I genuinely don't believe we deserve to win that game and get here, so I think this could be Germany's win. But touch wood, be optimistic, stop being pessimistic. Let's be optimistic. We can definitely win this. Let's go and do it. So first question comes from Craig Henderson. He says, do you think Korea Motors suffered due to the introduction of Ultimate Team? And if so... Uh, sorry, and if so, in what way? Um, it definitely has suffered. It definitely has suffered completely as a game mode. Um, Ultimate Team, of course, began in FIFA 09 as downloadable content. I remember downloading it from the PS Store. That was back when you could uh, put your Virtual Pro in Ultimate Team and you had the uh, the arena and you could have bandanas for your Virtual Pro. And that was back when uh, Ultimate Team was a bit of a comedy sort of, not a comedy game mode, I guess, but it was... Um, it was a lot more arcade-like compared to what it is now. Now it's really serious and pe competitive. Back then it was more uh, more arcade-like. I remember back because uh, I remember back when uh, Ultimate Team first came in. You used to get like cards where I don't know whether you guys played it back then. But you used to get cards where you could like um, you could sometimes make it so the goal kicks and the goalkeeper's kicks would always would always be like ballooning up in the air and stuff, and it was just funny. So back then Ultimate Team was more arcade-like and it was a lot more fun and enjoyable in my opinion. That's why I sort of uh, lost a lot of love for it over the over the uh, last few has become more serious and more competitive but it definitely has suffered career mode because ultimate team uh, is a game mode where ea can make money on it all year round unlike career mode where the only way ea can make money from it is by selling it uh, by using it as a selling point to actually sell the physical copy of the game in ultimate team you can uh, you know you can buy virtual packs uh, to get yourself virtual uh, cards and in turn virtual currency and ea realized that they can make money by doing that by releasing things like team of the week for example try and get, get more interest in it so ultimate team is has become a lot more focused on by EA. It's been it's been prioritised really as a game mode over career mode because they know they can make money on it all year round, not just as the selling point to buy their physical uh, for people to buy the physical copy of the game, but to buy virtual packs, for example, uh, in order to try and get team of the week cards and so on and so forth. So. Uh, you know, Ulmer team has definitely made career mode suffer a little bit in that respect because a lot more people play it nowadays. And uh, of course, as I said before, EA can make money on it year, year, all year uh, all year round, which you can't really blame them for doing so because they're a company and they need to make money. But even so, yeah, career mode definitely has suffered. They don't prioritize as much time on it as we would like to see them do so. And hopefully that would change in the future, but I, I don't really see it happening. Unless Ultimate team becomes a game mode which starts to die down a little bit in terms of its interest, that's when career mode would, uh, would take a bit more of a renewed interest in terms of the way EA prioritizes uh, improving the game mode but I don't see that happening because Ultimate Team just has way too many people playing it it's got a lot of interest and of course it's the game mode which they can make their money on all year round and it can be a continuous cash flow for them so of course they're not going to prioritise the game mode uh, over that one when they know they can make more money on it so there you go and I'll get to the next question in just a moment's time but Germany have a couple of good chances here with Goethe turning and it's going to be really hard to defend against Germany like their attack is really really strong Müller and Royce I think could be a great sort of uh, wing option wide, wide option for Germany Germany's cut inside for, and for of course uh, Kevin Volenstein up top as well. He's a decent striker, so this could be a really, always a great chance if uh, Germany will get the ball away. So this could be a really difficult game for me to defend in. I'm actually contemplating going to defend early on in this game. I think I'll leave it just for the time being, but if Germany get a few early chances on the board, you better believe I'm not going to hesitate in going to play a defensive style of football uh, to make sure we don't concede early on. Anyway, the next question comes from EB Lux, and he says, "Do you believe in destiny?" Uh, no, not really. Uh, destiny, fate soulmates uh, determinism for example I think that's just our way as, hu as, as uh, our way as human beings of trying to make something more special than it really is so yeah destiny fate soulmates determinism nah I think that's I think that's not right determinism versus free will is uh, is an interesting one of uh, looking at the universe I remember being in psychology uh, back when I was in sixth form and our psychology teacher asking us as students whether we believed the universe operates in a way of free will or determinism and it's, it's an interesting question. Back then, I didn't really know what to answer it as, but I do believe it's free will. You know, determinism and, and the world being set in motion and pre-planned, if you will, you can see why that, you can make a case for that being the case. You can see why that would be a case for making that the case. Does that make sense? You can definitely make a case for that being... Um, that being the way the world works, determinism, but I don't believe in it personally. Um, I, I like like soulmates, for example, is always a nice way of looking at the world. Like um, I remember being in school and we had two teachers called Mrs. and Mr. Neve, who believe it or not, uh, believe it or not, were married, and they were in their fifties or possibly sixties, and they actually met in our school as students. They uh, they studied in our school as students. They met in school as students. They dated as students, and they'd been married for well, presumably over forty years. I think they'd both be in their sixties now, and uh, that was always a nice 
nice story, you know, for, for me, you know, to know they met in our school, dated in our school and got married and everything, you know, and, and our teachers in our school as well, you know, so it made me think about soulmates. Oh, what a chance for Germany giving the ball away and Royce, what a block by PK. What a recovery challenge that is. So that made me think about soulmates, you know, maybe there is such a thing as soulmates because they've been together since such an early age. They've stayed together and I presume they're still together now as I'm doing this commentary, wouldn't know for definite. And that made me believe that soulmates, for example, might be a possibility, but for every, oh yes, get him, Rodrigo, top scorer of the tournament, deserves his start. Well, that's actually going to go as an own goal, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that, 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 sort, that type of story definitely makes me believe in sort of uh, fates, if you will. Soulmates, for example. Uh, destiny, they were destined to be together from an early age, for example. Um, but I, I don't really believe in it personally. It's, it's a nice way of looking at it. It is a nice way of looking at it, but uh, I don't believe in it at all. And, uh, and there you go. And the next question comes from Jamie, and he says, what subjects did you learn in school? Um, in school, uh, in GCSE, uh, I studied uh, geography. I studied English, I studied maths, I studied business, I studied double science, biology and chemistry, and I studied drama as well. Um, physical education, did I mention that? I think there might have been another one I studied as well, but those were the, the, the subjects that come to mind anyway. And uh, I, I studied those subjects, and I, 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 my, my grades were really, really poor. I got, um, oh, what a chance, great, saved the hair. I got uh, an A in physical education, that was my best ever grade. I got like C's in drama, biology, business and English and then in maths and geography was it maths and geography? Maths and geography I got an E I know I got an, an E in maths I think it was an E in geography as well but yeah, I got C's in like business, drama, English and science. And of course, you guys have been um, in exam season right now as uh, I'm doing this commentary right now. You guys have been in exam season. And I know a lot of you guys have been stressing over exams, and I can't blame you for that. It's a very stressful period. But uh, what I will say is that, oh, it's got to be 1-1. One, one. Yep, great follow-up headed by Muller. What I will say is that don't worry about it too much, because I know that a few guys you have been asking me about exam tips and so on and so forth, and I didn't really want to answer you know, any kind of exam tips and so on and so forth, because obviously I, I didn't do too well in my exams. But I would say that you shouldn't worry about them too much. Like You've got many, many years ahead of you. And yes, of course, they do play a part in your, uh, your hopes of getting a, a job, for example, an enjoyable job or a job in your field but there are loads of more study op uh, study options you know this isn't like the only time you'll ever study and these grades will be the only thing that employers will look at on your cv so don't worry too much don't stress too much yes of course be optimistic try and try and do as well as possible but don't worry too much and uh, and there you go and germany back on level terms then through thomas muller that was frustrating because the hair made a really good save but alba was never going to win that in the air and uh, muller was always going to put it into the back of the net so 1-1 one, one. and this is the worry for me because germany have such a great offense like seriously their attack is really really strong their defense looks hard to break down i definitely think we can get ourselves inside a few times especially when we try and exploit the fullbacks but even so their 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 offense is going to be unbelievably strong like I, I i can see germany putting two or three past us in this game and we're going to have to defend really really well to ensure that doesn't happen so let's uh, let's let's make sure we're composed at the back but you can see like muller and royce are definitely going to win a lot of headers volland isn't back in bad in the air as well but we need to exploit their defense at the fullback position. That's what we're going to do here with Rodrigo going down the right-hand side. Come on, this is a great chance. Drilling that cross towards Costa, cleared away by Saul. So next question comes from uh, Arib, and he says, Is it better to speak your mind all the time or tailor your views to not upset people? I, I don't agree with tailoring your views to not upset people. I don't really agree with that like changing your opinion on something just because you don't want to upset people. I, I disagree with that sort of way of looking at things. But I definitely believe that you shouldn't... Oh, what a chance. Always oh, deflected up in the air and corner. I definitely don't think you should um, you should criticise people for, have, for having different opinions uh, other than the ones you've got. I think that's what I try and do in my life. And, you know, I, I guess the best way of looking at it... Oh, is that going to go in almost another deflected goal? I think the best way of looking at it is like... Um, like the best example I can bring up is uh, religion, for example. Like there are so many different religions in the the world and you know non-religions as well um you know i i don't have a religion anymore i don't believe in god anymore um although i used to but i don't criticize people for having different opinions on uh, the way the world uh, sort of uh, is for example like the the, the belief systems they have i don't criticize for people for having different opinions to me like i believe in evolution for example but a lot of people believe in creationism and i have no problem with that you know i don't tailor my views in order to uh, like like i don't i don't uh, tell people that i believe in god anymore just because i don't want to upset those that do but i don't criticize those that do uh, have a religion like i don't criticize people that are of, of any kind of faith whatsoever and that's the way you should look at the world that's 
that's the way you should way, way you should do things. You should be respectful of people's views, even if they're different to yours. That's that's the way I try and do things anyway, because that way, you know, you don't have to change. That's, is that a penalty? Wow, I don't think that was a penalty there. That way, you don't have to change who you are and what you believe in just to suit other people. But you do make sure that you're respecting of their beliefs, that you're respecting of their opinions, and that works the way in every single way. Like political, for example, like I'm a left wing political person i'm a lefty was that really a, oh i guess yeah you can see what's a penalty can't you i'm 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 more of a left uh, left wing based politic um sort of a uh, person when it comes down to politics central left to a bit more left a uh, bit more sort of left wing if you will um yet there are some people that are like center right for example and i don't criticize them or you know completely you know you know i, I guess just make them feel i want to say by no make them feel uh, worse about themselves for having different opinions to me politically you know i don't tailor my views to to suit their needs but i also don't criticize them for having different opinions to me I think the best way is always to make sure we respect others for having different opinions and uh, and not making them feel bad if they're in a the minority as well. So uh, there you go. I don't think I made much sense with that question, but hopefully you understood what I was trying to say. So missing that penalty, not a good way. Do you know, I, I didn't really talk about that penalty much because I knew I was going to miss it. Like, I knew I was going to miss it. I just knew I wasn't going to find the back of the net there because I don't know why, but I missed quite a few penalties in finals. I missed one in the Capital One Cup final. I missed one in the Champions League final back in my West Brom career mode. I missed quite a few penalties in, uh, in finals. So I wasn't surprised to miss that one there. And there you go. So next question comes from Kyle. And he says, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, I'm not really sure. I'd love to live in New York for a bit. I don't know why I think New York would be a really cool city to live in. I'd love to live in Rio as well. And I'd love to live in Spain as well. Some kind of uh, nice, uh, nice warm country, I guess. Um, but I, I don't really have any sort of a definite place for which I'm definite, uh, which I'm uh, wanting to live in indefinitely for the future. Like I'm, I'm fine staying in England, for example. Like I actually have a, have a um, have someone I knew who moved to Spain not too long ago, uh, moved to Valencia, I think it was, and that sort of thing was like something they really wanted to do whilst they're still in their twenties, which is kind of cool. But for me, I'm 22 years old. I don't need to worry about where I'm going to live for the rest of my life um, completely because I, I I don't mind where I am. Basically, I'm totally fine being. Where Forever, so long as I get to do the things I want you know living where I want is not as important as getting to do the things I want whilst I'm alive I guess and uh, I, I guess I would like to retire in somewhere like you know south of Spain for example but when it comes down to living like the the, uh, the, the, the vast majority of my life I don't really mind where it is so long as I'm doing what I enjoy doing and there you go so still 1-1 going into the second half I definitely think there are chances for us to win this game <laughs> we have one there with that penalty but I think Germany's attack is really strong and we're gonna have to be really really careful at the back and make sure we don't throw too many bodies forward. What I've noticed about this Spain squad, which is really bizarre, is that Sergio Busquets and Javi Martinez, I have them as my defensive midfielders primarily to defend, yet they get forward an awful lot. Martinez and Busquets, I have them to defend, yet they get forward an awful, awful lot. And uh, hopefully, you know, against Germany, you need to make sure they stay back. But hopefully in the second half, they will stay back a little bit more and make sure we're not exploited at the back. Come on, let's go run. Let's go run. Why are you not? What? No, don't run the wrong way. Jesus Christ. Go on, Bisquets. Let's cross that ball in towards Costa. See if we can get ourselves a goal here. Did I just tut? Did I just tut into the microphone? That was not good. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, next question comes from, I'll get to it in just a moment's time. But oh my goodness. This, like, like you saw the pass accuracy at half time. What is wrong with this game? Like, seriously. Germany's passing has been flawless. I've barely ever got the ball of them. This is so annoying as Wallen gets tackled by PK but wins it back. Still Wallen back towards Royce. Are they going to cross? No, one back by Rodriguez and we'll get the ball away. The ball rarely ever goes dead in finals. <laughs> you guys should know that by now. It does take me a while to get around to the questions because the ball very rarely goes dead. And I don't get too many times to uh, go back and look at my phone. But here's Rodriguez. What a run. This is by Rodriguez. Still Rodriguez. Still Rodriguez. Oh, I went the wrong way. I wanted to fake shot it and go inside, not outside. And Germany clear. And still the ball has not gone dead yet. Still the ball has not gone dead. And I just realised Germany are playing with 10 men as well. This is the chance you want to exploit that. Come on, man. Let's get the ball back and go on the break. Who's that off the pitch, actually? I think they're playing with a back three, so it might be uh, it might be Hornshoe, because I'm missing a right back, I think it is. And no, Miners can't keep it on, so they'll make a sub. And there you go. So the next question comes from Jakey, and he says, what are your three things on your bucket list? I have quite a few on a bucket list, but they're not really... Um, they're not really sort of like bungee jumping and swimming with dolphins and all that kind of stuff. They're more sort of life aspirations, I guess. More like um, 
you know, getting married, having children, for example, they're more on my bucket list. But I, I wouldn't mind actually doing a separate commentary one day where I talk about the things that actually are on my bucket list. Maybe you guys would be interested about that. Not too sure. In fact, why don't you leave a comment? Let me know if you'd be interested in hearing what's on my bucket list. And there you go. Rodrigo surely makes it 2-1, gets in. Germany were down to 10 men. Had to capitalise on that. And Rodrigo makes it Spain 2, Germany 1. Get in. So next question comes from Pumis. And um, yeah, so the answer to that question is there's a few things on my bucket list, but let me go guys let me uh, sorry let, let me know if you guys would like to uh, see me do a separate commentary on it because I think that might be quite interesting so the next question comes from Pumis and he says what is your greatest achievement my greatest achievement as sad as this makes as sad as this might sound for some of you guys is hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube that was a really awesome achievement for me because when I um, when I started off doing YouTube I always definitely believed there was a chance I could get to this sort of level but when you break it down you realize that 100,000 different people have subscribed have subscribed at some stage or another and you know thought I'm a, a I'm a good person to subscribe to that's an awful lot of people and yes I know that the vast majority of my subscribers are inactive and that's totally fine uh, most channels nowadays have inactive uh, subscribers but it's still I want to save the hair it's still awesome to know that at some stage in someone's life 100,000 different people thought that I was good enough to be subscribed to so that's an awesome achievement for me I'm really proud of it and uh, when my 100,000 subscriber plaque came in the post a few weeks ago I was absolutely delighted as it was really really cool for me and uh, and there you go as Germany Germany are going to crank up the pressure now for the next 20 25 minutes I can definitely tell it hopefully we can try and um, sort of tie them out and make them run out of steam and try and hit them on a counter attack like here but they are definitely going to put us under some serious pressure and hopefully we'll be able to cope with it so let's actually go to defensive and uh, ensure that in the next 25 minutes or so we can make sure they don't grab themselves the equalizing goal and I'll get to the next question in just a moment's time but you cannot afford to take your eyes off the screen when Germany are coming on the attack so let's get that ball away come on the squirt through to Towards Rodriguez. There, there's definitely chances for us to hit Germany on the counter attack and score a third goal, but I don't want to push too many bodies forward in the uh, in the um, the knowledge knowing that they could definitely score a uh, score an equalising goal. And, uh, and there you go. And when is this ball going to go dead? Seriously, this game just continues. PK can't get back. Come on, Volland on the ball. Out wide towards Muller. Great chance for Germany down the right hand side. In goes the cross. It's deflected. Come on, Martinez. You've got to win that in the air. There we go. It's one of the bonuses of playing Javi Martinez in defensive midfield position. Goetze towards Kroos. Still a chance for Germany. Come on, can we get the ball away? Azil on the ball. Don't want to push Ramos out towards Schmelzer. That's a good tackle by Montoya. Should win that of Isco. There we go. And oh, that's a poor thing. Should not have done that. Should just clear the ball. Why not just hoof it there, mate? Why not just hoof it? Why did I do that? If Germany score now, I'm going to be furious on myself. That's going to go in, isn't it? Oh my goodness. How unfortunate can you get, man? Seriously. I tried to clear the ball and it just deflects off. Is that, is that Muller? Oh my. No, it's Volland, actually. Oh my goodness. That is just. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, try to clear the ball away and it hits Voland and goes in, just trickles into the bottom corner. That's not even intentional. That's the second time Alba's been caught out there. And it's Spain 2, Germany 2. I said their offense is good enough. It certainly is. They've got a really good offense. And I've, I've injured Voland. He's got injured by scoring the equalizing goal. How ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You can see him getting subbed, in, subbed off in the background. How ridiculous is that? Dear, oh dear. Anyway, next question comes from uh, Dan. And he says, if you could relive one moment or day in your life, when and what would it be? Um... It's, it, it's a difficult question, that one, because, yeah, it's falling coming off, isn't it? The Sogas coming in, oh, God. It's a difficult question, that one, because I, I haven't... Um I haven't had too many great things happen in my life in terms of, um, in terms of real causes for celebration, if you will, or, or anything like that. Um, there's, there's a couple of things that do spring to mind, but I think the, the one day, if you will, that really does spring to mind when I think about this is it's got to be 3-2. Uh, what a great block that is by Schmelzer. I think the one day that does come to my mind was uh, just over a year ago, uh, back in May, when uh, someone who I, um, who I used to know was just being really, really kind. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain this one, really, but I've, I've gone through a lot of uh, tough times in my life, and I still do to this day, really. Um, I've tried to kill myself twice. I've, I've, I've basically just had a lot of misery. And one of the biggest worries for me is I've never really sort of had someone who I feel like I'm able to trust indefinitely and have someone who's, you know, basically without me even asking, going to be there when I need them to be. Um, that, that, that sounds kind of detrimental to the friends that I have, I guess. I don't mean it in that way, but I guess it's, I'm not, I'm not a very trustworthy person because I've been let down by a lot of people, let's just say that. And uh, back in May last year, this person was just unbelievably, 
I, it's, it's just hard to explain really, but they, they just made me feel on this one particular day like things were going to be okay and I haven't really felt that way for several years now, you know what I mean? Like I've never really felt like things are going to turn out to be okay, but on that one day, the way that one person was acting towards me and what they were saying and the way they were helping me in a really, really significant manner um, made me feel like everything will be okay, like everything genuinely will be okay. I know I go through a lot of uh, tough times, I know that not everything's going to work out, but things will be okay. And, uh, and that was a really awesome day for me because I genuinely, like, I've never had that level of optimism before like I did then. But uh, there you go. And next question comes from Tim, and he says, where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? 10 years' time. I'll be 32 going on 33. Jesus. Um, <laughs> that is a disconcert. That's a concerning, uh, concerning age to be worried about, just 32, 33. But, Jesus, that does sound really old to me. It must sound really old to you guys as well. Um... In 10 years' time, where do I want to be? Do you know, I generally don't really know. I guess I, I would like to still be doing YouTube in 10 years' time because even though 32, 33 does sound really old, I would like to know that I've been able to keep YouTube going for such a long period of time, for over a decade. Um, but I, I don't know where I'll actually be in 10 years' time. Like, I think I'll probably be doing some kind of basic admin job. Like, I... I, I definitely think there are chances for me to make YouTube uh, a long-term job for a few years at least. Con Rodriguez, I oh, would have blocked by Saul. Um, but I think that I can't keep it going for more than, let's say, three or four years' time max. I, I think in three or four years' time, my channel's going to burn out a little bit. And, uh, oh, it's cleared off the line by Gutter. That's the second time Germany cleared off the line. I think in about three or four years' time, my channel would have peaked by now. Uh, sorry, peaked by then. And uh, by that stage, I'll have to start looking at, you know, trying to find a, a, a permanent job that pays a lot more. What a great cross and what a header by Isco and we retake the lead for the third time with five minutes to go so I think in 10 years time I'll probably not be doing YouTube as much as I would like to be doing it and I'll probably be doing some kind of basic admin office job just working you know nearby to where I'll be living and that's probably it really I, I, I wish I could say something amazing like oh in 10 years time I'll be I don't know, something just absolutely amazing, like a sports analyst for Millwall, wouldn't that be great? But uh, yeah, I think I've already just been doing some kind of basic admin job, basic office job, and uh, hopefully enjoy my life, but uh, there you go. And the next question comes from Oli, or the Flex Master, and he says, if career mode stayed exactly the same in FIFA 16 as it is right now, would you still enjoy it? So... He says, let me try and get my breath back first. He says, if career mode stayed exactly the same in FIFA 16 as it is right now, would you still enjoy it? Um, would I still enjoy it? I, 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 I think I would enjoy it, but I think I'll be disappointed. I guess that's the best way of doing it. Let's bring on some subs. Let's bring on um, Martinez gets Taikwais. Let's bring off uh, Martinez. And I think I'll, what I'll do is play PK as a defensive midfielder because he's got a high attacking work rate because both of those have high attacking work rates. We need someone that can actually sit at the back and defend. Let's bring on uh, Blanco. And I think I might actually bring on Grimaldo for, hmm, Rodriguez maybe? No, I want Rodriguez for pace. Uh, maybe, this is a difficult choice. Um, might take off Costa for Paco Alcacer because he can definitely track back. And we'll leave that just in case the game does go to extra time. And there you go. So, yeah, I, I definitely still enjoy it. I definitely still would enjoy making career mode videos for you guys. But I'll be a little bit disappointed. Because I think that I think that over the past couple of years, I think, uh, you know, the vast majority of us career mode players have been let down a little bit by EA. I actually discussed it in my FM episode last week on, on Friday night. I think a lot of us career mode players have been disappointed by EA for not really implementing changes, which we're really, you know, excited to see. The Global Transfer Network has been the biggest uh, improvement. If, if, if you want to call it an improvement to their game over the, uh, the past few years and a lot of people don't even like the global transfer network when it first came in I didn't even like it because you couldn't unmask the players overall unless they're a particularly high overall so I, uh, I, I think I've been disappointed by EA's lack of um, lack of effort to change the game mode so I'd, I'd still enjoy it don't get me wrong because I don't think it's a bad game mode at all I just think there are too many flaws and too many limitations with it so I'd enjoy it but I'd be disappointed and I guess that's the best way of answering that question and uh, Toothless says is YouTube a worthwhile job and how hard is it to start up a successful channel um, it's not a full-time job for me just yet as I mentioned before I don't really earn enough money for it to be considered a full-time job because I can't move out yet but it's it's definitely a worthwhile job. It's it's definitely it's definitely worthwhile because I, I love doing what I do. Because even though I'm not a big video game fan, as you guys know, I love making videos for you guys. I'm 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 a, I've got a pretty creative mind. I would like to say anyway, and I love making videos for you guys. I I love you know putting out the videos for you guys. I love engaging with you guys. So it's it's definitely worthwhile for that alone. And um, it's it's difficult. It's really really difficult. And and to get a successful channel like I I don't even class my channel as successful. Like I really don't. It's it's really really difficult to get to a level on YouTube where you genuinely believe that you are, you know, considered successful, I guess. 
but it's it's it, if you can make it work it, you'll definitely feel like it's worthwhile but there's a lot of struggle that comes with it I, I don't think there are many youtubers out there that have never struggled you know to, to build up an audience you know we all have at some stage and even right now we still struggle to maintain our audience so it's hard it's demanding it's um it's hard it's demanding it can be very demoralizing but if it does work out for you it's more than worth it i'll tell you that much and uh, and there you go so let's bring off isco actually try and waste a bit of time now because i'm i'm fearful to be honest bring on uh pedro matter pedro matter pedro matter pedro's more I, I think pedro's more the sort of the wide option but matter's more creative through the middle let's bring on matter because we've got rodriguez to do it on the wide areas and uh, and there you go so uh, the game's coming to its close now, so hopefully we won't throw it away in stoppage time like we did against the Netherlands and we'll be okay. And the next question comes from Connor Smith and he says, how come you don't get bored of FIFA? I do get bored of FIFA. I do get very bored of FIFA because it's, you know, it's it's not, it, I, I enjoy playing some aspects of the game, but some of it's very, very boring. I do get bored of it, uh, I do get bored of it quite frequently, but it's the subscribers that keep me motivated to keep on going, I guess. And that's the best way of explaining it. Like I, I do get very bored. Like there are some, there are some days where I'll turn on my PS4 and I'll be like, oh God, go record another episode of, you know, Club and Country or Career Mode or, or My Player or whatever else where I'd, you know, rather do something else. But, you know, it's, it's the subscribers that keep me motivated because I know they really enjoy it and I want to make sure that they uh, they get the content they want. It's a great chance to seal the game. What a challenge by Schmelzer and it's cleared away and uh, I'll get to the next question in just a moment's time but I think the game is going to finish here unless Germany can carve out a goal from this final chance. Royce on the ball. This is it. Nope, there's the final whistle. It's all over and we've done it in a thrilling European Championship final. Oh my goodness. I, I am so relieved man. Seriously, we led this game twice against Germany. We got them back into it they equalized on two separate occasions and we missed the penalty through isco yet we still came up with the goods thanks to that late winner through isco funnily enough and we do win it by three goals to two and the relief on my face right now if i was doing a face cam you guys would see i am just so relieved i am really really happy we've done it i was desperate to ensure we wouldn't lose the final and we have won it by three goals to two so get him we are the champions of europe with the european championship victory over germany by three goals to two and that is that is very relieving because I mean like, you just you can't allow like that, that that's the second time that's happened it happened against the Netherlands and it's happened against Germany as well we've allowed a team to come back on two separate occasions to equalize but thankfully we come away with the good so PK is gonna lift the trophy Spain are champions of Europe and Spanish football is back on the rise back in 2014 they were humiliated in the World Cup but they are back on the rise now under my management and if this series was to continue I'm more than confident this Spain team would have a lot more success over the coming years as well as Pika gets to left the trophy. And I'm, I'm sure Shakira is very, very proud. So delighted with that. Absolutely delighted with that. And it's just, it, it really is relieving because when Germany scored their equalising goal for the second time, I was thinking, oh my goodness, this is only going to go one way now. Germany are going to get the momentum on their side and we are going to struggle. But instead, we did what we need to do. We pulled it out late on, thanks to that Isco header. And we do grab the European Championship. So delighted with that. As you can see with the stats as well, it was a pretty balanced game. I have to say it was a really, really good final. I love the idea that 65% pass accuracy for us and 74% pass accuracy for Germany is somehow right. That's completely wrong. But even so, it was a great game, really, really entertaining, and uh, five goals split between those two sides, but thankfully we got the three. Um, I honestly believe that was one of the best uh, sort of international finals I've ever played. That was really, really fun to get involved in, and uh, and there you go. So, delighted with that, and uh, again, I'm, I'm looking at stats right now. I'm just, I'm just wondering, how on earth can EA get something so easy like pass accuracy wrong, man? Like, seriously. But even so, great to win the final, great to win it there, and that, of course, is going to end this series as well. So, I'm so glad I was able able to uh to make sure we would uh end on a high and end with a win and uh, let's see if i can just quickly uh end a few more questions as well uh, next question comes from jason fang and he says do you ever do anything for yourself to celebrate your youtube milestones i don't uh i don't do that at all but uh, it was it was really nice when i got my 100,000 subscriber plaque uh, that was a really nice celebration i guess for um for me personally because i really wanted it but I don't, I don't do celebrations or anything like like throw parties and anything uh dan core says would you ever live stream like on twitch i'd love to do so but uh sadly i just i don't really have the time for it and i don't think i'm very entertaining enough to keep people involved 
uh, sorry, keep people uh, entertained for a long period of time. Uh, Zayden says, who's your favorite singer, group or band? Uh, Joshua Raiden is probably my favorite singer and my favorite artist, but I also really like Drake as well. And uh, Rob Martin says, I know you get this a lot, but how do you keep motivated for YouTube? Uh, it's the subscribers, really. Uh, the subscribers keep me motivated and keep me in the game. And Alexis says, what is the first game that made you love video games? Um, made me love video games? Not too sure. Probably probably Crash Bandicoot, in all honesty. Pretty, pretty obvious answer there. Probably Crash Bandicoot playing on the PS1. That was a lot of fun. But that is going to be the episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Club and Country, then please do leave a like. It's much appreciated, and it really does help my channel out. Again, I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you for everyone that's been supporting this series. I really do appreciate it. Despite it being a secondary series, it still had an awful lot of support, and I can't thank you enough for that. So really do appreciate your support. It means an awful lot to me. As for you, if you can help the channel out by leaving a like then please do so as that is much appreciated and it really does help my channel out um, of course you don't have to leave a like if you don't want to but I really would appreciate it it does help the channel and there you go and also a reminder as well this is the final episode of the series so I really hope you guys have enjoyed it it's been a lot of fun for me to make hopefully you guys have had a lot of fun watching it as well and uh, again we may come back to this series at a later date but it's highly doubtful but even so it's been a lot of fun I really hope you guys have enjoyed it and I really do appreciate your support so thanks very much for watching really hope you enjoyed the episode and this series as a whole really really appreciate your support and i will see you for the uh, the next episode of this series not very soon because this is the uh, the final episode but i'll see you for the uh, first episode of my new series very soon hopefully in a week or two's time that'll be coming very soon hopefully you enjoy that and i'll see you for another video on my channel very soon hopefully you'll be enjoying it and i uh, appreciate your support and i'll see you soon